With the victory Friday, the women's ice hockey team clinched the ECAC regular season championship for the first time in program history. Right you are, Josh. And 14 wins in a row, the women's basketball team continues to roll through its conference schedule. Josh, a repeat conference championship could be in store. Definitely, Andrew. More close calls for the men's ice hockey team this past weekend as it as they faced off against RPI and Union. And Josh, while playoff time is approaching for the winter teams, spring sports are underway. Josh and I have it all. Sports Pause starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Sports Pause. I'm Andrew Badillo. And I'm Josh Silverman. Andrew, we've got a lot to cover tonight. Winter sports are heading down the home stretch while spring sports are in full bloom. Hey Josh, full bloom. I like that a lot. Less snow, the better. Let's get started on the ice, shall we? It was a year, well, Josh, we're gonna get right on to the first game this weekend, Quinnipiac versus Union. If they win, they win the ECAC regular Definitely season championship. Andrew. And Josh right here, TT Sianferrano, it was gonna be here her all night long. She nets the first goal, her first goal game right there, and Josh, it was gonna be a theme all game here. Nice move, puts it right back, right past Union goalie, Melissa Black. Two goals for, for Sianferrano. And that was going to be all for Union this one. Nice assist from Union here. She puts it right past the goalie there. And for her final goal right here, rips it top shelf, bar down. 5 nothing at that point. Union would go on to lose to Quinnipiac. 9 to nothing at the end of the game. Complete route. They win the ECAC regular season conference championship. Cass Turner after the game. There's no better finish to that game than having our seniors out there on the ice. And our team felt that. And you know, I think for them, they understand that it's not just them. We talk about 10 letters. We talk about Kulpiak and Pride. And there's a lot of people have, who have come before this group and players, coaches, and, and support staff that have helped us to get to this point. And I think that's really important for our team to remember. And I, you know, they're going to live in the moment tonight and, and celebrate this because it's a huge accomplishment across the season. But when we come back tomorrow, we're going to be ready to move on to our next task. I'm speechless. Like, I'm trying to think of a word to try and describe it. And it's just this feeling in your entire body that's just like, I don't know. It's a just, it's all in your skin. It's in your veins. It's, it's from all the hard work. And it's finally this feeling that is honestly relieving. And then we're just ecstatic. It was a year of first for the women's ice hockey team this season. The first time the senior class defeated Harvard, the longest winning streak in program history, and finally, for the first time, ECAC regular season champions. It was a magical year for Cassandra Turner in her first year as head coach as her squad tore through ECAC play. The Bobcats continued their dominance this past weekend against RPI, Josh. Definitely, Andrew. More women's hockey. Here we go. They took on RPI on Saturday. They were looking to wrap up ECAC play. We start with Nicole Costa, who drops it to Emma Greco, who rips a slap shot past the goalie. 1-0 Quinnipiac. It was her first goal of the year, and it could not have come at a better time. But now, RPI is trying to answer. They're on a 2 one but Sydney Rossman denies Lauren Walsh with a pad save. With, and then, RPI, Shayna Thompson comes back, and Sydney Rossman blocks her. Q still leads. One nothing. What a save, Josh. It was. Kiyu then wins the faceoff, and Nicole Connery passes it to Nicole Brown for the goal. Kiyu wins 2 nothing. That was Brown's sixth goal of the year. Then, Bobcats on the power play later in the second period. Nicole Brown passes it to Kristen Tamberg, who risks it in 3 nothing to Quinnipiac. What a period for, for Brown. An assist and a goal. Now Melissa Skamasavich tries to do it all for herself. She hits the post. And wrapping up the game, Nicole Costa behind the net passes it to Nicole Connery, who scores 4-0 Quinnipiac. They wrap up regular season play, and they're so happy. I mean, they ended senior day with a win. Cindy Rossman with a great game. The women's hockey team dominated Union 9-0 on Friday and beat RPI 4-0 on Saturday. The Bobcats find themselves atop the ECAC standings and ECAC regular season champions. Coming in second and third are Clarkson, Clarkson and Princeton, respectively. Quinnipiac will host RPI both Friday and Saturday in the first round of ECAC play. The latest pairwise rankings are out. Quinnipiac stays put at number four after winning the regular season conference title. Boston College remains first, followed by Wisconsin and Minnesota. Other ECAC teams to make the top ten are Clarkson at number five, Princeton at number seven, Colgate at nine, and Colgate at nine, and Harvard at ten. 
The top eight teams in the pairwise at the conclusion of the conference tournaments make the NCAA tournament. Now we're going to bring in our women's ice hockey analyst, Sierra Goodwill, to recap this past weekend and look a little forward towards the first round of the playoffs. Sierra, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me, guys. Okay, Sierra, so we saw it this past weekend. Um, the team dominated its slate of games against RPI and Union. Um, but how important or how much of an impact did the special teams make? The, in, the in, special teams were imperative to the team to get where they are today. Let's start with the penalty kill. It's at 92%, second in the ECAC, just behind Princeton. This team plays their best defense on this unit. But, however, Quinnipiac is also very good at being disciplined and limiting the penalties that they take. So that could be part of the reason why they were so successful on the penalty kill. But then you saw, then you saw against RPI, they they were really they took some of those some of some of those penalties and they were able to go 100% on the penalty kill. And also you have Sydney Rossman as that as that rock in net with averaging less than one goal a game and has 15 shutouts. So obviously she's key in that unit as well. And then moving on to the power play, they're 25.6% on the power play, another impressive unit. And of course, they're going to convert on the power play when they have natural born goal scorers on their team, such as Taylor Titi Cianfrano and Melissa Samuskevich, another unit that is super strong. So obviously, the special teams have been huge for this number one seeding, and it's going to be huge going forward in ECAC play as well. Sierra, you mentioned Sydney Rossman, but who are the other players to watch in the playoffs? So Nicole Connery has been playing her best, her best hockey of her career recently. She had a six-point weekend, two goals and assists against UConn, a goal and two assists against Union, excuse me, a goal and two assists against RPI. She's playing the best hockey at the right time, and Cass Turner said after the Union win that her seniors are so hungry for victory all the time, and T.T. Cianfrano, obviously, four goals and such an impressive showing against Union. Another another such a consistent offensive player, just beat Kelly Babstock's sophomore year point record her offensive consistency is what drives this this hockey team and obviously Melissa Samuskevich arguably the toughest competitor on the team she has incredible speed and just that championship mentality that you want in a player plus 28 plus minus rating when she's on the ice good things happen um, she's a great facilitator knows where her teammates are and is able to find the back of the net when they need her I think the Bobcats are extremely um, well-rounded in all facets of the game, but obviously these players are the ones to watch going forward. Certainly, Sierra, a wealth of experience mixed with a lot of young talent, um, but let's move along. Uh, past RPI, if the Bobcats are to make it that far, what are some teams to look out for for them? Well, Quinnipiac starting off against RPI. Obviously, they just beat them 4 to nothing this past weekend, so I believe that they will be successful against them coming up. But Harvard-Colgate is an interesting matchup to watch. Colgate just beat Quinnipiac a couple weeks ago in Harvard and annual, annually gives Quinnipiac a, a run for their money. But it will be a tough game between Harvard and Colgate, but if Harvard wins that one, I believe it will be a tough a tough matchup against Quinnipiac. It's hard to be a good team three times in one season. Harvard is struggling a bit right now, but Emrys Mashmeyer is keeping them alive in net. And because of the history between Quinnipiac and Harvard, it, if they end up facing off, it's going to be a battle. And another interesting matchup is Clarkson and Princeton. Say Quinnipiac makes it to the finals, which I see them doing, um, they're most likely a going to face one of these teams, either Clarkson or Princeton. I think Clarkson has all the keys necessary for success to make it to the finals. They have the offensive threats in Kaylee Mercer, who is second in the ECAC in points, Olivia Howe, and then arguably one of the best goaltenders in the ECAC in Shea Tiley, although I think Princeton is a little bit of a dark horse in the ECAC right now. Um, I, I believe that those teams are what Quinnipiac is looking ahead to. Sierra, how far can this team really go? Well, I just said my prediction about them winning. I believe they will win the ECAC tournament. But when it comes to the NCAA tournament time, it seems that everyone's talking about the seemingly unbeatable Boston College, Wisconsin, Minnesota. And while I see Quinnipiac making a good run in the NCAA tournament, possibly a Frozen Forks appearance, 
I don't, I see it stopping there. Alex Carpenter of Boston College has 76 points this season in her senior year and a career 267 points, just, just insane. Quinnipiac does not have players of that caliber and haven't really faced teams that have players of that caliber. So they're going to make a run. It's going to be fun to watch Cass Turner and her squad. They're on a roll. They are winning. They're winning, but um, it's going to be a good run. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sierra. Now we're turning it over to women's basketball, where they took on Marist in a game for the number one seed. The Bobcats looking for their 13th straight victory. Last time they faced Marist, they lost by nine points. We're starting with the third quarter. Marist Ali Clement makes a three a three-point basket to put Marist up eight. Then and late after that, Marist Tori Jarose nails the far two-point jumper. That put Marist on a 10.0, 10 to 0 run. Marist and Quinnipiac have to take a timeout. QU then ends Marist's run with Sarah Schumann's three-pointer that put Marist only up seven. Then, in the final minute of the third quarter, the freshman, Paula Stroutmanet, makes a jumper after getting a great rebound. And then, they weren't done yet. To literally end the quarter, Aaron McClure makes a basket at the buzzer. QU is only down one going into the fourth. Then, and I think we might see this play later, Andrew, Aaron McClure makes a layup after the beautiful, pay, beautiful fake Q has a 57 to 54 lead with eight minutes left to go in the game. Sure wouldn't mind seeing that play again. No, Josh. you wouldn't. Paula Straubman gets the steal. She looks to pass. Nope. She says, I want to do it myself. Q you up 59-54. Marist was not out of it yet. Ali Clement knocks down the three-pointer. Q is only up two. But who are you gonna call when the game's on the line? Senior captain Maria Napolitano. And McClure passes her the ball. She has a beautiful fake, drains the three. Q was leading 71-63 after, and then after a series of free throws, will go on to win 76 to 71. This was a huge win for the Bobcats as it put them in first place. Here's Trish. Trish called the timeout, and there was a lot of credit to. The composure that we have is just second to none, and you would never know it going into that timeout down 10. And Maria Knapp just led us out of the, the timeout in terms of just the defensive stance and making some great individual plays. Uh, we run a weak side tight curl that was giving us some issues for some easy layups, and she stepped in and picked up the ball and just came right down the floor. Well, Josh, the women's basketball team is on a late season run reminiscent of its incredible season last year. Trisha Fabry's squad extended its win streak to 14 games Sunday when they beat when the team beat Ryder 65 to 47. Carly Fabry led the way for the Bobcats, scoring 17 points while going a perfect three for three from downtown and four for four from the free throw, free throw line. Quinnipiac visits Manhattan in its next game Tuesday at 5 p.m. at Dratty Gymnasium. Last week, Erin McClure took home the U.S. Basketball Writers Association Player of the Week Award. McClure became the first player in program history to take home the, a National Rookie of the Week Award after, do, after a dominating week. McClure averaged 18 points and 9 rebounds during the week, helping the Bobcats go 2-0 as they beat Iona and St. Peter's. Quinnipiac is currently one game behind Iona in the MAC standings. These teams faced off earlier this month in a game that the Bobcats won by just a point. They faced each other again on February 28th in a game that will likely decide the number one seed. The reason the number one seed is so important is because the third seed, Marist, as we saw, is such a dominant team that the number two and number three seeds will, would have to face each other if they were to meet in the semifinals and the number one seed wouldn't, they, if, if they both were to make it. When we come back on Sports Boss, the men's ice hockey team had a busy weekend as it visited RPI and Union. Kyle Lavaster stops by to break down the team's recent play. And Josh, the men's basketball team played host to St. Peter's in Manhattan this past week. How would it, how would it fare? We'll let you know. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Freshmen this year have stepped in and really just eliminated that problem, doing the right plays at the right time. I mean, it certainly seems like an uphill battle for this team, but I, Trisha Fabi is one of the best coaches at this university. Bobcats hosting Arizona State. We'll start with this power play. But she's strong. Good Lord, I saw her lifting one time. She could squat three of me. Like, oh, well, that's seven of me then. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Sports Pause. 
in the end that we're here to win a championship this year. Jess Fontaine now has that. She's going to take a ripper off the post, but she's going to come back. And my number one, hold your applause, Bobcats fans, is Quinnipiac. All right, Victoria, you know what time it is? It's top five plays of the week. My favorite time. All This week's trending topic is hashtag that. We are your source for Quinnipiac Entertainment News. Welcome back to Sports Pause. Josh, the men's ice hockey team has been tremendous all season, but have not been playing their best hockey of late. Let's see how the team fared this past weekend. All right, the men's ice hockey team went up to upstate New York to visit RPI and Union this weekend. Let's start off with the RPI game. Early on in the first period, Quinnipiac is going to strike first. Travis St. Dennis is going to tip it right past goalie Jason Kasdorf there. Quinnipiac up 1-0. Late in the first period, RPI is going to come right back with a tip-in of their own. There you go. Cut the deficit to one. RPI gets one right past Michael Gartig. On to the second period. We're going to have a little rumble on the ice here. Tim Clifton, Derek Smith involved. Bottom of the pile there. Riley Bourbonnet trying to be the peacemaker for RPI. It would lead to an RPI power play right here. And they're going to have a great opportunity. But Michael Gartig with the incredible save off a tricky tip-in. Still tied right there. The puck. Here would be loose in front. Gartig would flail at it. No go there. RPI takes the one goal lead midway through the second period. On to the third period now. Quinnipiac on a power play of their own. And they would convert. Slam Manis with the shot. And Tim Clifton cleans up the mess there. Tie game. It's been a theme all year. Coming back in the third period for Quinnipiac. Would they be able to do it again? As we see it right here, RPI scores. One goal lead. Less than four minutes left. We've been here before, Josh. And yes, we're going to be there again. Devon Taves. Right past Kasdorf there. They're four for four with the empty net this year, converting, scoring another goal. On to overtime we go. Nice little outlet pass to Soren Janssen here, and he's going to snipe one right under the pads of Kasdorf. 5 4 Quinnipiac wins. Staying with men's hockey, KU took on Union College in a game that would decide, that would give them first place in the ECAC if they were to win. We're starting with the second period. Sam Annis with the pass to Travis St. Dennis, who scores, uh, who passes Travis St. Dennis, who, who scores 1-0. That's Travis St. Dennis' 17th goal on the season. Then second period, we have Jeff Taylor, who is barely able to keep the puck in the zone. He's fumbling with it and is able to get it to Mike Vecchione, who is able to snipe it and score after the exchange game is tied at one. What a shot there, Josh. It was a great shot. Soren Janssen then is able to work the puck along the boards and pass it to Connor Clifton with the snipe. He scores, Q is up two to one. Now we'll move to the third period. period. Union would not quit. JC Broussard is getting, gets the pass, and I don't know what Quinnipiac's defense is on this play because he just shoots and he scores, tied two two. It's a four on one play, Josh. Hey, no one was able to stop that goal. Then Quinnipiac gets back at him. Kevin McKernan 
His shot goes wide, but he's able to recover it and pass it to Soren Janssen, who scores off the rebound. Q leads 3-2, but Union, they fought all game and they fought here. Mike Pinaldarelli generates a 2-1, passes it to Eli Wurtzel, who scores, tied 3-3, and that's how this one would end. After securing three points this past weekend, the men's ice hockey team has a four-point cushion over Yale for first place in the ECAC standings. With a win against Brown Friday night, the Bobcats would clinch their second consecutive Cleary Cup and their third in the last four years. Yale and Quinnipiac face off Saturday night in the annual Heroes Hat game. We now welcome in our men's hockey beat reporter, Kyle Lavasser. Kyle, thank you for being with us in studio. Josh, Andrew, always a pleasure being here. Thanks for having me. Kyle, especially in hockey, February is the most important month. How do you think this team has done so far? Well, Josh, you said it. February has historically been a crucial month for championship winners. If we look back at the reigning champions from last year, Providence, uh, they went 5-2-1 and one in February of 2015. The year before that, Union, who won it all, went 8-0-1 oh in a great February 2014 campaign. And then if we go back two years before that, Boston College, who won it all, just dominated in February, winning all seven games they played in. So obviously, it's a huge month. If we look at how Quinnipiac has been doing, Andrew, you and I have been to plenty of games this season, and it's just been night and day from the first half and the second half of the season. Quinnipiac is currently 3-1-2 and two in February, and it's really been the defense that has been struggling. If they want to get their act together come playoff time, the defense has got to pick it up. All right, Kyle. Well, they still have two more games left in February this weekend against Brown, but everyone's really paying attention to that Yale game. Josh, what does Quinnipiac need to do in that game in order to secure a win? Well, Andrew, I was down at Media Day today talking to head coach Rand Pecknold, and he said the focus is all on Brown as of now. Uh, that game will decide the winner of the Cleary Cup, that is the ECAC regular season champion. As for the Yale game, we all know there's a lot of hype around it. The uh, problem getting tickets was just crazy here around campus. Uh, if they want to do well, they're going to have to rely on Michael Gartig. He's been pretty, uh, he's been struggling the second half of the season, and he's got to pick it up. Kyle, ECAC players are almost playoffs are almost upon us. What team is the biggest threat to this team? Well, I just started talking about it. I think it's got to be Yale. Their defense is the best in the conference right now. They allow the least goals per game. If they can find a way to uh, score a few goals come playoff time, they're really going to be the hardest team to face for them. But then you also have teams like Cornell, RPI, Clarkson, St. Lawrence, not to mention Harvard. The ECAC is just so deep. Any team can beat any other team at any given day. So it's really going to be a toss-up. And yeah, Kyle, I mean, we've been talking about him all year. Sam Annis, yes. he's been a crucial, special, important player. Everyone says to cherish him on campus. <laughs> um, but really, Kyle, how important has he been to this team this year? Well, Andrew, he's been so important to this team all year. They wouldn't be where they are without him. And really, he has the chance to be the best player in Quinnipiac hockey history. He's only eight goals away from b breaking the Quinnipiac Division I goal record, career goal record, excuse me. And he's been red hot as of late. He's currently riding a 15-game point streak. He leads the ECAC in, in goals and points. He's just been so dominant this season. He's really going to have to play well come playoff time if they want to succeed. Thank you, Kyle. When we come back, on Sports Pause, Andrew and I will recap everything that occurred in spring sports this past week. And Josh, it was a beautiful day today. Looking forward to those spring sports, huh? And Josh and I will also give you the top five plays of the week. Which dunk, deke, basket, or goal will make the cut? You won't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Freshman this year has stepped in and really just eliminated that problem, doing the right plays at the right time. I mean, it certainly seems like an uphill battle for this team, but I, Fisher Fabi is one of the best coaches at BC State. The Bobcats hosting Arizona State. We'll start with this power play. Okay, she's strong. Good Lord, I saw her lifting one time. She could squat three with me. Like, oh, that, more that, seven that, to me then. <laughs>
Welcome back to Sports Pause. Andrew, the men's basketball team has struggled all year where its injuries are close calls. Yeah, right you are, Josh. And there was more drama this past week as Tom Moore's squad faced off against St. Peter's. All right, Josh, let's get right to it. St. Peter's visiting Lender Court and the Quinnipiac Bobcats. St. Peter's would get off to a flying start early on. They would be up 15-3 at this point. Here we go, Rodney Hawkins with the layup. Travis Weish is gonna follow it up right here. Another bucket, 17-3, St. Peter's is up early on. However, Quinnipiac would crawl back as the half wore on. Danny Harris with a three right there. And with another one right here, Josh, he has been the best three-point shooter on this team all year. Definitely. And the threes kept on a coming here. James Ford nails another one right there. And at the end of the half here, or a little, a few minutes later, Abdullah Bundu is going to hit another layup right there. As we move on into the second half, Chase Daniels is going to give Quinnipiac the lead right there with that layup. And Giovanni McLean is going to add on to it right there. Four-point lead for Quinnipiac. At the end of the game here, Abdullah Bundu has two free throws to give Quinnipiac the lead. He gives him the lead right there with one point. Misses it there. End of the game, Chase Daniels rejects Weish. However, St. Peter's with .4 seconds. He's going to have one more chance right here. Quadir Welton hits it. Doesn't hit it. Refs are going to go to the monitor. They rule. No shot. Tom Moore post game. Quinnipiac wins 56 55. Taking with men's basketball, Andrew, uh, they need a big win. They need to beat Manhattan. They need a win in the MAC. It was senior day. You could see James Ford getting pumped up during the ceremonies. Look at him dancing. He's at toes or whatever. He's having fun. He's having fun. First possession of the game, he dishes, Gio McLean dishes it down to Chase Daniels. He misses the easy layup. That seems to be a theme for this team. And Hatton then turns around, Tyler Wilson, wide open three. He hits it. Now this, this was not a great play, Andrew. They, the offense couldn't find any rhythm early. They kept messing, they kept fumbling the ball, missing early shots, and it really didn't get better until the second half. You can see here, Chase Daniels goes up for the layup, and he gets the ball taken away from him like he was stealing his lunch money. Gone. Manhattan possession, they were winning, and then Aaron Hung gets his pass deflected. It was not a good half for the Bobcats, they went into half down. But Chase Daniels turns around and literally turns the game around with his floater in the paint that cuts the deficit to four points. Then Chase Daniels puts up a reverse and he's fouled and won. He would convert on the free throw, they would only be down one. Dimitri Flores with the great floater. Quinnipiac is still down in the game, however. Then, with 18 seconds left in the game, Daniel Harris dishes it to Chase Daniels, who loses the ball. Quinnipiac would have to foul Manhattan. They are down with point with seven seconds left. Jim McLean hits the, the three. They're down with point four seconds left. They're down two. On Manhattan, Rasheen Forrest stores, I'm sorry, hits both free throws. He loses 63 to 59. The men's soccer team is getting a jump start on its season, announcing two new captains for this upcoming season a rising senior James Doig and a rising junior Max Rothenbuger. The women's indoor track team finished second in the MAC championship Sunday at the Armory in New York City. Quinnipiac finished in second place behind Monmouth. The Bobcats finished with a total of 133 points, which is a program record at the event. Freshman Carly Timpson earned co-most outstanding field performer and became the first runner in program history to earn the award at the MAC Championships. The men's lacrosse team kicked off its season Saturday with a tough matchup against number 10 ranked Brown. The Bobcats got thrashed by the Bears 20 to seven behind five goals from Bears forward Dylan Malloy. Ryan Keenan gave Quinnipiac the early lead in the first quarter, but Brown came right back and scored six unanswered, unanswered goals putting Quinnipiac out of commission early. Quinnipiac returns to action Saturday when they visit Bellarmine University. The women's softball team traveled to Chicago to play in its first tournament of the new year. They won one of the games 5-3, to three, lost three of their games, and their last game was canceled. Their next tournament is in Virginia on Friday when they face Buffalo. The women's tennis team has played two matches this calendar year, dropping both of them. Lost to Binghamton 3-4 to four, and then Seton Hall University 1-6. to six. Their next match is this Friday at St. Joseph's University as Quinnipiac looks to get its first win of the new year. And back to lacrosse, Josh. And much like the men, it wasn't pretty for the women's team as it fell 21 to nothing to UConn on Wednesday. Quinnipiac faces off against Yale in its next game on Wednesday. 
And Josh, Acro and Tumbling rolled through West Virginia this past weekend as it swept its trio of meets against Fairmont State University, Alderson Broadish University, and Glenville State College. The Bobcats improved to 3-1 and one on the season. They returned to Hamden Sunday for a meet against Gannon University. This week's prestigious Bobcat of the Week award goes to T.T. Cianfrano, who helped the women's hockey team clinch its first ever ECAC championship. She scored four goals on ten shots and added an assist in an outstanding effort against Union on Friday. Her final goal count on the season is 27, which is the most on the team. She added six shots against RPI on Saturday. The sophomore will definitely be a player to watch this upcoming weekend and throughout the rest of the tournament for this Red Hot team. And Josh, now it's time for everyone's favorite segment of the show, the top five plays of the week. I'll take the honors on this one. I feel like we'll see a few plays that we recapped early on in the show. At number five, Quinnipiac late down, up late in the game. Chase Daniels to swats away any comeback effort for St. Number Peter's four, in that one. Erin McClure, the outstanding freshman with the fake, with another fake, she gets the basket. She's been a huge boost for this team. Right, you are, Josh. And for the number one, number three play, we're going to go TTC on Ferrano right there. She's going to snipe one past Melissa Black, one of her four goals on the game. With a great save by Michael Gartag, Devin Taves deflects the punk puck in front of the net, and Michael Gartag is somehow able to save it. I don't know how he did it. Watch the replay right here. You can see the puck is highlighted. Outstanding play. And now, Josh, for the number one play, here it is, RPI TV with the call. Soren Janssen snuck it onto the left pad of Jason Kasdorf. It's a 5-4 overtime win for Quinnipiac here. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Sports Pause, Josh. I had a blast, my man. The pleasure was all mine, Andrew. There's so much... More action left in the winter season. Playoffs start next week. Be sure to visit our website at www.q30television.com for all your playoff coverage. Also be sure to follow us on social media at Q30 Sports. For Josh Silverman, I'm Andrew Badillo. So long, and we'll see you here next time on Sports Pause.